It seems like a day doesn't go by without someone criticizing video games for being too violent or containing offensive content. However, when separating outcries from random individuals, sometimes big organizations may band together to label a game's content as inappropriate for one reason or another. One of the more notorious of those groups is PETA, aka People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Surprisingly, PETA has a long history with video games, both producing new games to promote their cause, but also criticizing games and companies for their portrayal of animals. Today we're going to be looking at PETA's parody games, beginning of their parody of Cooking Mama. Cooking Mama, the award-winning cooking simulator series produced by Cooking Mama Limited, has been praised by critics, but the people at PETA objected to many of the meat-heavy recipes featured in the game series and released their game, Cooking Mama, Mama Kills Animals. In this game, a sadistic looking mama prepares a grotesque Thanksgiving dinner. After finishing the Thanksgiving dinner, mama gives up meat and prepares a second meal, a vegetarian friendly tofu turkey. Majesco, Cooking Mama's North American publisher, issued a response which included the following statement, quote, Cooking Mama World Kitchen includes more than 25 vegetarian friendly recipes, including delicious breakfast, dinner, dessert, and snack options. And, while Mama is not a vegetarian, she fully supports the humane treatment of animals, particularly for her canine protege Max, who makes his doggy debut in World Kitchen. PETA responded by saying, While we had a good time roasting you, the real purpose of our game, of course, was to bring light to some horrific practices of the turkey industry. They further urged the creation of a vegetarian-only game and promoted a meatless diet. Two years later, PETA challenged another popular game series, Super Meat Boy, an indie platformer developed by Team Meat with their parody, Super Tofu Boy. In Super Tofu Boy, the hero of the official titles, Meat Boy, is a jilted lover who Bandage Girl was dating out of sympathy before she left him for Tofu Boy. After she leaves him, Meat Boy kidnaps Bandage Girl and it's up to Tofu Boy to save her. Throughout the game, which is an imitation of Super Meat Boy, players receive tips like, vegetarians make better lovers. In a twist, the creators of Super Meat Boy were not angry with the parody. In fact, a PETA parody game is exactly what one of the creators of Super Meat Boy was hoping for. Game co-creator Edmund McMillan claimed to have, quote, repeatedly made fake usernames in PETA's forum, pushing the game at them in hopes that something like this could happen. He further explained that PETA is a thousand times more well-known than Super Meat Boy, and the fact that they went out of their way to make a parody like this is beyond flattering and amazingly helpful. The company also put an unflattering Tofu Boy in their game on Steam. Tofu Boy is described as having an inflated ego and not actually as effective as he thinks he is. Moving on, 2010's Pokemon White and Black, the fifth generation of the franchise, introduced Team Plasma, a group of gangsters nominally fighting to liberate Pokemon from people. While in their game, Team Plasma's efforts turn out to be misguided and it appealed to PETA who introduced their parody, Pokemon Black and Blue. In the game, you journey with Pikachu and other Pokemon as they rebel against humans to try to spread the word about animal abuse around Unova, which is the region in Pokemon Black and White. The Pokemon hope to upload a video of animal abuse across Unova in order to promote Pokemon rights. The Pokemons then battle several humans, which are parodies of people from the series, such as Charon, Professor Juniper, and Ash Ketchum. Ash, who serves as the final boss of the game, is dressed like a deranged circus ringmaster. The game portrays Pokemon trainers as animal abusers. It bases its battles on classical Pokemon mechanics, including attacks like Thundershock and Quick Attack, but also new attacks like Protest and Group Hug. According to PETA, the amount of time that Pokemon spend stuffed in Pokeballs is akin to how elephants are chained up in train carts, waiting to be let out to perform in circuses. But the difference between real life and the fictional world of organized animal fighting is that Pokemon games paint rosy pictures of things that are actually horrible. Nintendo, seemingly unconvinced, issued a terse statement on the game. Quote, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company take the inappropriate use of our products and intellectual property seriously. Nintendo's warning did not stop PETA. In 2013, they released a follow-up game, Pokemon Red, White, and Blue. The game has virtually identical mechanics to the last one, only this time the Pokemon are after the real-life McDonald's Corporation. Game enemies include the Hamburglar, a McDonald's customer, and Ronald McDonald, the company's CEO in disguise. The game's website explains, PETA helped Pokemon liberate themselves from their trainers in Pokemon Black and Blue, but giant corporations are still exploiting Pokemon for nefarious purposes. Are Pokemon profits earned at the expense of the animal's well-being? Join PETA as we help Pikachu and his Pokemon friends journey to America to unravel a conspiracy that affects us all. The game itself hammers in this point. 
Text at the beginning of the game asks how Pokemon would react if they saw how we treated real life animals. They also poke fun at the Pokemon franchise itself. Quote, would they feel like it's completely ridiculous that Nintendo releases two versions of essentially the same game and then has the audacity to release a slightly different version a couple years later? This is a jab at Pokemon White and Black 2, a fifth generation sequel which also takes place in Unova. However, the cause of the game seems to have to do with a McDonald's toy tie-in which PETA objected to. Moving on from Pokemon, in 2011, PETA decided to take on Mario. In his acclaimed third game, Super Mario Bros. 3, and the much later Super Mario 3D Land, Mario can be seen wearing a Tanuki suit, which he uses to fly and turn into a statue. This was too close to Ring Animal for Fupita, who stated, Tanuki may just be a suit in Mario games, but in real life, Tanuki are raccoon dogs who were skinned alive for their fur. By wearing Tanuki, Mario is sending the message that it's okay to wear fur. In their parody game, Super Tanuki Skin 2D, a skinned Tanuki chases Mario, draped in the Tanuki skin, still dripping with blood, across a Mario base level. The goal is to catch up with Mario and take back the Tanuki's skin. In a staunch reply, Nintendo gave a response to Eurogamer, saying, Mario often takes the appearance of certain animals and objects in his games. These have included a frog, a penguin, a balloon, and even a metallic version of himself. These lighthearted and whimsical transformations give Mario different abilities and make his games fun to play. PETA eventually issued another statement to reassure Mario fans they were not totally against the popular game series, calling themselves Mario fans as they explained, We were a little surprised that the game was taken so literally by some, but we're thrilled that we're able to bring so much attention to raccoon dogs whose suffering is very real. They also announced that their game had over 250,000 views in the first 36 hours and urged people not to buy real fur. PETA has made many other games, with some targeting other organizations like McDonald's and also people such as JLo. So far, however, these are all of the games that campaigned against gaming for mistreating animals. Although, PETA does still regularly criticize games in other ways for how they depict animals. Call of Duty World at War was a rather unique case, for example, with PETA sending a care basket full of the game Nintendogs to Activision's offices. This was due to World at War allowing players to kill dogs, and PETA also combined this with blog posts and the usual campaigning over the game. Whilst normally game publishers won't be persuaded to make any changes, PETA does still manage to direct a lot of attention to their causes and the type of ethical concerns that exist in real life over the treatment of animals. And to PETA, that's surely what's more important. Until next time, thank you for watching.